Hi, let's take a look at how Harmonic Explorer works. It's written in JavaScript. There's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. These are the files. It's on GitHub. It uses the p5.js library. Um, so let's start with the index.html file. I think I might um, mute the volume on this while we talk. Okay, so um, what's important to know about in here? Let's look at libraries that we have to include. These three libraries come from P5. So this is P5 itself. This is the DOM manipulation, and this is the sound library. And then here we bring in, as a module, sketch.js. So let's start there. Here's sketch.js, 188 lines of code. It's the main module for uh, doing this. And you can see it imports shape, shape, the entire imports shape sound from sound. So these are the three files. So here's shape. Let's expand this. And also let's switch to the structure view so you can see what the structure of the file is here. There's a constructor. Um, let's look at that first. Oh, I meant to start with uh, the sketch. Here's the sketch. The most important thing it does is create a new P5 object. And here's what's inside. Here is a settings object. These are a bunch of things that uh, we can adjust to change the way the program works. Many of them are controlled by user interface controls on the web page. Um, these things here. That's a lot of what we're seeing here. Let's move this over some. Um, what are interesting things? Well, the names of the keys here. Right now it's, it's playing in B flat. And the waves, sine, triangle, sawtooth, and square. And let's see what we want to look at next. Well, uh, processing programs, P5 programs, typically have a setup and draw function or method. And so let's look at those. Let's look at the setup first. And the first thing it does is create a canvas to completely fill the window here. And this turns on, uh, enables WebGL that allows us to do 3D stuff. You see these cubes as they move up the view, we see a different uh, part of the cube. Uh, create knobs. Let's look at that. Create knobs creates code to deal with the user interface control. I call them knobs because you think of them as tweakable knobs that adjust the way this thing works. Uh, we use the hue, saturation, and brightness color mode instead of the red, green, and blue just because it's more convenient. If you see these... Um, Frequency harmonic uh, harmonics going from left to right, they map to the, the colors, colors of the rainbow, um, starting with red and going to blue. So it's convenient to use the hue uh, to just uh, map where we are on X to between 0 and 255 for the hue to get the color for these things. Um, next, shape create time. You notice that these shapes come out at um, this is a fairly regular pace, but uh, there's some ras uh, random aspect to it. If I pick up the speed here a little bit, then they get generated faster. So the next shape create time is uh, used to determine when it's time to make a new one. Next, key change time is used to determine when to change the key. See, we're in the key of C now. I'm going to change this so it cycles randomly. So we'll, who knows where we'll go after the key of C. But this, um, every 30 seconds, 
the key changes. Now we're in B flat. Um, okay, so that's the setup method. The next important method in a processing or P5 application is the draw function. And let's look at this. And um, there's a lot involved in drawing here, but I've organized it into other functions that get called from here. Uh, change key if needed, change the key, changes the key at the appropriate time. Uh, background zero makes the background black and clears the screen for every frame. And then translate here, half the width, half the height. Um, and scaling brings the origin down to here to make the some of the calculations for positioning things easier. Draw harmonic paths. I call these things the harmonic paths. They are um, planes. Just uh, uh, two or four, I forget which, pixels wide going from the bottom to the top. Uh, remove distance shapes. Once these things have served their purpose, then they get removed. And then um, here's drawing each shape. So we call shape draw. And then this creates the new shapes. So you see they start here at the bottom. Um, what do we want to look at here? Draw harmonic paths. Sets up a loop. One iteration for each harmonic. And as I said before, it creates a plane for the, uh, the line to make the lines here. Um, there's a resized function that just resizes the canvas when the window is resized. Change key if needed. What does it do? If the time is right, then it considers the key change style, which is this. And it does a switch. So case zero, one or two or something else. So case zero, it just goes up by five semitones. That's a, that's a fourth to go in the cycle of fourths. Otherwise, it just adds one for incremental. And then uh, for each of these, it wraps around when it gets to 12. And here it, we add a random integer to it. Actually, we don't add a random integer. We randomly choose an integer from 0 to 11. Um, then we display the key. What does that do? That selects this key element here. If I inspect this and then show you in here, this is key. It has a class of label. So this finds that and then sets the text content to the settings key names with the key index. So key names is up here. These are split by space, so this is an array. So that causes the, in this case here, the D flat to appear. There it is. Okay, I think I'll collapse some more of this stuff as we go through here. Uh, we're gonna come back to draw for shape Create shape if time looks to see if it's the right time, and then it creates a new shape here and pushes it into an array and then figures out when to make the next one. And remove distance shapes. Let's expand this whole thing here. Remove distant shapes, creates uh, an array of the indexes that, of the shapes that need to be deleted, goes through and looks at all the shapes, and if they're complete, in other words, they're up off the top, they've done their job, then we stop the sound of them, and then we remember which uh, what their index is. Then we come along and we delete the shapes from the array of indexes. 
Okay, it's time now to look at the shape module. So this is a, a class shape, and it uh, when we instantiate one, we, we uh, do this. We create a shape that will play a note on a randomly chosen harmonic. So the shape code itself here chooses which harmonic it's going to uh, play and position itself on. Uh, what do we want to look at here? It um, This is the length of the note. This is randomly choosing the harmonic. This is picking uh, or finding the color that corresponds to the harmonic. This is if you um, decide you want to have um, bad intonation playing out of tune like this. This becomes, uh, let's see, how does this go? Pitch deviation, one minus settings intonation. If intonation is set to one, then this is zero. So normally this deviation is zero, but if you have um, lowered this, then it will uh, increase, the deviation will increase. The, um, the amount of deviation, there's a random deviation chosen. Um, they don't know, when you pick When you say you want them to play out of tune, some of these will shift to the right like this. That one's pretty close to being on. Some will shift to the left. So within the range of uh, bad intonation that you've selected, it will randomly pick something. Okay, so that's how the frequency is chosen. And then the position on X is calculated from the frequency. And then um, how long the note plays is sort of random. It's a random uh, Gaussian, so it's a normal distribution. The mean is five seconds. The standard deviation is two. And then that's can never be uh, less than two or greater than 10. And then we remember what time we start playing. Then the pan, the shifting from the left speaker to the right speaker, or somewhere in between, is done from um, where we are, harmonic frequency, within the range of from the fundamental to the, to the highest harmonic. Um, so if you, so this one should be at um, negative 0 0.8, mostly in the left speaker. And then this rightmost one should be mostly in the right uh, speaker. Then we create the sound object to do the rest. Um, okay, so let's come back to the sound and let's continue with this draw function here. We find out how much is remaining to be done. And by that I mean how far up we are. And then um, well, what we're getting at is this box, to draw the box. And in order to draw it, we need to have the color and the position. And so, min y, this is where they start. They start right about here. That's 40 pixels from the bottom. And the y range is the height minus that spot. And then where we are in y, is determined by um, starting here, and then you add some portion of the range uh, that's controlled by the by the remaining ratio, this number here. Okay, that's draw. Complete ratio, this figures out a number between zero and one, um, corresponding to the to the life of the the shape, how complete the life is. And so this looks at what, how many milliseconds have elapsed, basically the, the number of milliseconds since this shape was created. And then we find out how much time is remaining. And then we turn that into a, um, 
the ratio of how much time remaining over the time it's supposed to play. And uh, let's see, if remaining is greater than zero, uh, then we give that ratio. Otherwise, we just give one. We don't want to say that it's more complete than one. Uh, the final bit is sound. Here's a class called Shape Sound. And when we construct one, we need to say the frequency and then a, a bunch of setting things, which is mostly this stuff here, and then the pan and then the note length. And here we use the um, P5 oscillator at the frequency. And then we start out assuming that we're not having any vibrato. And then we call add vibrato to add vibrato if vibrato is chosen here. Then if the volume is not zero, we do the rest of this. We create the uh, ADSR envelope. That's the attack, decay, sustain, release. You may know that some instruments start when they play a note very loudly at the beginning, like a piano. You press the key, the hammer strikes the string, and that's the loudest part right when it hits, and then it gradually decays. That attack, decay, sustain, release envelope shapes the volume of the sound over its lifetime. And we set the type of the sound based on what's chosen here. And the, uh, the amplitude will be driven by the ADSR envelope. We set the pan. Then if we have a vibrato, we start the vibrato. Then we start the, the oscillator for the tone. And then we start the envelope playing. And all these things happen uh, within very short interval of each other. Okay, so let's see. How do we create an ADSR envelope? That is done with this call to set ADSR, which is a feature of P5JS. And we give it the uh, values that it needs, some of which are hard-coded here. The decay time comes from the, um, it, from the caller. That does that. And what about add vibrato? What does that do? If we have a vibrato depth greater than zero, then we'll create an oscillator for the vibrato, vibrating at the vibrato frequency, which is this. And we set the vibrato's wave type. And then the, um, the amplitude comes from the vibrato depth here. So let's see if I can figure this out. And 1 12th is a semitone. So um, if I'm remembering this right and thinking about this right, the maximum vibrato is one semitone. Does that seem right? Not quite sure. Um, disconnect is something you do um, because the, the vibrato oscillator is not producing a sound on its own, but it's used to uh, shape the uh, volume of the primary sound generator. Um, and then we set the, let's see, tone oscillator. This is where we um, add, let's see, we, we set up the primary tone oscillator so that we, we um, change its frequency using this vibrato oscillator. And stop stops both oscillators. Okay, I think I've covered everything in the code. Um, maybe a little bit more in the in the body here, there's nothing special. Um, the controls are in a table, maybe because I'm not a CSS expert and this seems like a nice way to get things lined up. Um, so this is the uh, HTML element, the input element that makes a range control for the volume. So that makes this. Um, okay, so I hope uh, this interests you. Where's the code 
The code is on GitHub, so github.com slash DC Brichetti. I have a repository um, called Harmonic Explorer, and this is where you'll find the code. Okay, see you next time.